Good morning, guys. I am live this morning in town. I'm going to wait a little bit here and give you guys an opportunity to jump on with me. I have a good friend joining me today, and we are going to have a lot of fun with you guys. And I don't know if you can see the background, but look at that, guys. Is that not gorgeous? That's her view every day. She is one blessed woman. <laughs> Good morning, <Yes>. Tammy. <laughs> All right, well, some of you guys are joining in. I just want to say thank you to all you guys. So many of you reached out to me last week with such amazing and encouraging and prayerful words. And I just want to thank you guys so, so much for your encouragement. It really meant a lot to both my husband and I uh, just to know that you guys are out there and cheering us on. Good morning, Holly. <laughs> <laughs> They're used to it. My dogs do that all the yeah. time. My dogs do that all the time. I've finally given up trying to make it perfect. It's just real. Yep, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So guys, this is Val Day. I'm gonna share a little more about Val in just a second. I wanted to read something to you guys. This is something that came across um, my desk this week, and I thought it was really pertinent, and it actually pertains um, to both Val and I. Um, Val has walked um, a very interesting walk this last year herself, and she's just such a kindred spirit, and I'm so excited to be able to share her with you today. But what I found was we are trained by our troubles. A tree that plants that's planted in a rainforest is not forced to extend its roots downward in search of water. Therefore, it remains poorly anchored and can be toppled by even a moderate wind. But by contrast, the mesquite tree that's planted in a dry desert is threatened by its hostile environment. How does it survive? By driving its roots down 30 feet or more into the earth seeking for water. By adapting and adjusting to the harsh conditions, the well-rooted tree becomes strong and steady against all assailants. That's me. And I know that is this woman here too. I put something very similar to that on Facebook. We must read the right, the same things. Stuff. That is funny. That is amazing. That's what I'm saying. Kindred Spears. It's just so funny. Yeah. I know that through the time we've known each other, I met Val in November, December, mm -hmm. and since then I just feel this constant n nourishment and nurturing by the things she shares, and it's just been amazing. Good morning, George. So I want you guys to remember those words. They are in the description. Copy and paste them. If you are going through troubled times, hang on tight, guys. Um, you know, since I talked to you last week, the mountain man and I and, and the mountain boy have been getting hit from all angles. It's just been crazy. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. But you know what? Every step of that, of our week last week, every attack we had that the enemy was bringing forth, God counterattacked, and it was just beyond amazing to be able to see, you know, the, the ups and downs are so constant and so close and so rapid, but it's just so amazing to see. And when you get to this point where you're deeply rooted, when the attacks come, they're not as hard. They're, they're something you can laugh at because you know what they are. And to see the miracles working and coming behind is just incredibly amazing. And I just want to encourage you guys in your walk, no matter what you're going through, don't give up. Don't, don't weaken, you know, hang on. And I pray that you're, you know, that you turn to Jesus. Um, I, I know I cannot imagine my life without him in it. Uh, yesterday things were kind of crumbling and I went for a, a five mile walk and I just felt his presence the whole way and I'm understanding that God is chipping away at us. He's chipping away at us and it is such a growth period and such a growth time and it's all how you receive it. You can sit and mope, you can sulk, you can cry, you can just be depressed or you can choose to just see it for what it is and grow and learn from it and just embrace it and I, I I'll tell you what, guys, I don't think I was this excited about our first adventure. Um, just knowing that we are strong as a family, the growth that we've had over these eight years and where it has brought us, and just the excitement of the unknown. Um, you know, we've got a lot of work ahead of us, so please keep us in, our, in your prayers. The Mountain Man has a lot on his plate and um, it's overwhelming to him. So please keep him in your prayers. Good morning, Chad. And um, the prayers are appreciated. We are human. We weaken, but we are, we are we are strong too. So it's just nice to know you guys are out there and supporting us. So enough said. I want to introduce this beautiful lady. 
Again, this is Val Day. Val is one of my friends and clients, and she owns a travel agency. Um, she and her husband started that 40 years ago? Mm, yes, 41 years ago. Okay, yep. and you can find the links to her. She's on Facebook. I really encourage you to check her out, and you can find her website. It is internationalhouseoftravel.com, and I just think that is so much fun. I love the name of her business, and... I um, get to help her uh, share her journeys. She's been on such amazing trips and just does such neat stuff. So I'm just going to turn this over to Val. Val, why don't you share a little bit about yourself and, and what you do? Okay. Alrighty. Um, well, first off, thank you so much for this opportunity. It's just, it's fantastic. <laughs> and yes, we are kindred spirits. It's amazing. We almost can... I almost feel like we can finish each, each other's, other's sentences. sentences. It's so weird. <laughs> I know. It's nice. It's nice to find somebody like that. Yeah. Anyway, um, yes, I well started in the travel agency 41 years ago. Um, I want to make sure everybody knows I was two years old at the time. And, <laughs> <laughs> but I love her. <laughs> I just absolutely love travel. I had traveled to Europe and came home and just wanted to do something that would allow me to travel more. And I think what I enjoy the most is meeting people. I mean, the places that you go are beautiful, but it is the people. Yeah. It, it really is. And the more I travel, the more I realize there's so much that we have in common. Even mm. though they may have a total different culture, um, their language is different, lots of different things. But once you really start talking to people, you find out, especially as Christians, we all have that same basic connection, connection there. Yeah. And that's what's really, really neat. Um, and I started out, you know, with domestic travel. Now I just do international. And again, I've learned over the years, you don't have to sell the whole world. There's just no way that you can know the whole world. So I've been able to say no to different things. And I just, you know, handle what I feel comfortable with. Thanks. My husband and I had a full service agency with 16 employees for over 29 years and then we just decided we needed to do something different and um, you talk about God's timing it was just amazing <laughs> you know we would go into the office every day all dressed up he and his you know coat and tie and me with my dress and everything and he managed the all of the employees and I was a travel agent and then he just decided he was tired of managing and he said, I want to do something different. And it was like, I had never thought of it, but all of a sudden I had this burning desire to move to St. Mary's, Idaho, which is where my parents had a summer place. And <laughs> you know, up until then, I don't think you would have ever heard me say I wanted to move to St. Mary's. It had <laughs> never been on my radar. You go down there to have fun. You go boating, you go snowmobiling and stuff, but you don't live there. Hey. And we were coming from Spokane. So I knew that that was a God thing. That wasn't just me, that was a God thing. <laughs> and you talk about the enemy attacking us. Mm -hmm. um, we had a really hard time finding land. You know, we contacted people that own some, uh, well, this lot and a half, and they did not want to sell it. They weren't interested, okay. but we wanted it because I wanted to be next to my mom. My dad had passed away by then, and I wanted to be close to her for her summer place. And we had a lot of roadblocks, and I was amazed at how many times those walls just came down. And what was really funny, <laughs> my husband was a Christian, but he didn't seem to think he had that link to God like I did. And I swear, he would always say, well, you prayed about it, Val, didn't you? You prayed about it. <laughs> kind of like I was waiting, you know, he was waiting for the approval of, well, you prayed about it, Val. So anyway just zooming through the, the next uh, years, we built our house as a bed and breakfast. Uh, he loved to cook and we love people. And so he decided rather than open a restaurant, <laughs> he would do the cooking and it worked out perfect. And what was amazing with the timing is we had moved into the house only for a year and started our first season of full bed and breakfast. And he was diagnosed with um, cancer and it was a T4 tumor, he was given six months. Oh. And you talk about really changing your life, your priorities, everything. Yeah. But the one thing that I kept thanking God for is, thank you that we weren't in Spokane mm. with a full staff of like 16 employees that I would have had to have managed. I'm, I'm not management material. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't have done that. Right. And um, 
it was really rough. I'm not going to say that, that that time was good, but it yet it was. I look back on it and it was such a sweet time because I was at the end of my rope and mm -hmm. truly it was God who got me through. I just depended on God all the time. And I, I look back on it now and I think, what a sweet time. Mm -hmm. It should have been a terrible time. It wasn't. It was actually a sweet time. Um, my husband and I really slowed down and had time to, to spend with each other. Yeah. And um, amazingly, so after three doctors that said, yeah, just get your affairs together, nothing we can do. We did connect with a doctor who said he would do treatment. It would be extremely harsh. And he basically put it as a kill you or cure you treatment. Right. Wow. Well, um, so his cancer did go into remission. He did change a lot. We had 18 months of very harsh going in and out of hospitals and a lot of chemo and a lot of radiation and um, his throat burned and so he had a feeding tube for over nine months and it was a very different life and we didn't I, I couldn't work yeah you know we couldn't take in bed and breakfast people um, but the reservations that we had that we couldn't cancel um, Ah, oh, talk about the neatest people that came one <laughs> night I had to zoom him into the hospital because he just puffed up like a Pillsbury Doughboy wow. and um, it was just a reaction well when I got back about one o'clock the bed and breakfast people from Florida hmm. walked out and they said you know where were you what happened and so I told them it was like stop everything Ellen Ellen come over here let's hold hands let's pray pray oh, to Jesus cool. that Carrie will make it through it was just oh, it was cool. it was so neat yeah yeah very it cool. was it really was <laughs> and I feel like God has just sent so many wonderful people to our B&B. Um, I mean, I'm not embarrassed being a Christian, so every single room has Bibles in it. It has different pictures. The minute you walk into our entryway, <laughs> you know, we have things showing people that we love God. Right. It's just amazing how so many people just, we start having a conversation. Just this last weekend, I found out I had a village missions pastor that just retired oh we had such a wonderful visit cool I mean of course when they're making reservations I don't ask them what they did for them the, right know? right but it's just that's what I mean it's a continuous it is just it's just so fantastic so anyway um, Carrie and I did have it rough financially for some time because I do groups and if you don't set them up at least a year to 18 months in advance then the next year is pretty slim but we made it you know we we just really kind of pulled up our bootstraps and didn't spend anything other than absolute necessities. Yeah. And as a travel agent, it was almost embarrassing. I can admit it now, but I certainly didn't want to admit it at the time. I did not hop on a plane for seven and a half years wow. because travel to learn just was not in the books. We just couldn't do it. We couldn't afford it. Yeah. Um, so we just kind of kept plugging along and we did fantastic for 12 and a half years. And um, then he was diagnosed with tongue cancer, yeah. um, but it was a quick, easy. It was like, wow, this doesn't even seem like cancer. We you know, went over to Seattle, had everything taken care of, and but it reminded us that even though we thought we'd hit that, you know, you always kind of wait for your anniversary year of if you can get through a certain amount of years, right? You're okay. Right. Well, that kind of surprised us, but um, then it was a, a year ago, last December. He had a rotator cuff surgery and he just wasn't getting better. Uh, therapy wasn't working. He just had a lot of complaints about his shoulder. And again, not to draw it all out, but he was then diagnosed with a T4 tumor once again. And that was the end of January. February and March zoomed by like anything and he did pass away in April. But you know, I wasn't near as scared this time. I felt like God had been preparing me. Mm -hmm. um, Almost like I knew it was going to happen. I, know, I, I think that's kind of a weird thing, but mm, I did no. know it. He was really getting me ready for it. And living in St. Mary's, we moved down here. Neither of us had ever worked in the town. And so we didn't really connect with too many people except for our church. Um, because we didn't go into an office, you know, so right. I, I knew the people at the bank, the post office, and the grocery store, and that's about it. <laughs> right. But my mom had moved up here full time uh, so that, you know, we could be together on the river. She had passed away uh, in November, so mm. six months earlier. So in a way, I did feel like I lost my two best friends because that's who I talked to all the time. Right. But the amazing thing is mm -hmm. I never felt alone. 
Yeah. You know, so many people thought, oh, you know, you won't be able to handle it down there. You've got this great big house, which Carrie had said, put the house on the market, sell it, and move closer to your kids and grandkids, because we have four kids, uh, three daughter-in-laws, a son-in-law, and then six grandkids. So we are super blessed with a big family. Awesome. Um, <laughs> and I did put the house on the market for three months. And guys, you have to see this house. I mean, it is just gorgeous inside and out. The view, I mean, this is just, it's like utopia <laughs> here. It's really pretty. Well, it is beautiful, but I got a definite no from God because I didn't have one person come. Well, that's why I mentioned I mean, it. It's just, it's, me, it's really hard to fathom yeah. that somebody would look at this place. I mean, yeah. she's not off the grid. She's not as hard to sell. Yeah. <laughs> right. and, and she's on the river and it's a beautiful place. So that was definitely uh -huh. a God. It, it was. God it thing. was. And, um, and yet I wasn't upset. You know, it, that's what amazed me too is I thought, well, when I decide to do something, it's like, I'm almost done. You know, when I, like when the last you, time right. we sold our house because we wanted to move here, um, I, w I was packing before we even had it on the market because when I decide to do something, I'm, I'm yep. ready to do it. Fully committed. Yep, fully committed. <laughs> Get and that. yet when the three months went by, I wasn't upset about it at all. And I thought that was kind of weird. But yet I think it was because I was trying to do what my husband had said. Right. But yet a part of me was questioning that. But it was God that was saying, no, stay here. And now it's, it's so hard to explain. But yes, I live in this huge six bedroom home um, and I don't ever feel lonely I've never once felt uncomfortable or scared I do have the best security system in the world which is my dog <laughs> and God yep you know yep. and that's it and I you know I was wondering if I would feel uncomfortable being alone never have so I just I just know that I'm doing God's yeah. will that's yep. what I'm doing and I am doing bed and breakfast not as much as my husband and I would have done because my job down here has been my travel right and so there's just you know 24 hours you in can a day. only do so much right? exactly. exactly and so my focus really is on my groups um, which I do mostly wine and culinary tours but then I did have the opportunity to go to Israel last year and, that looked uh, amazing. Oh, uh, what a, yes, that was absolutely wonderful. That was like one of the best things I've ever, ever done. And so I'm very excited to start doing faith-based travel. Awesome. And, and working with um, different pastors and having their congregation go, because we had three pastors on our trip. And this was an industry trip, but it was so that we would get to know what our people Our would experience. Right. Yes. Right. We had communion in the Garden of Gethsemane. Ah, uh, that was Phenomenal. Wow. I was, I rededicated my life and I was uh, rebaptized in the Jordan River. Oh, awesome. We had Chad, how about it? Is that not awesome? <laughs> yeah. We had Sunday worship as we were sailing on the Sea of Galilee. Wow. I'm not kidding you. It wow. was just fantastic. I would go back and back and back. It gives me goosebumps only because I can feel God's presence so strong in our lives. I felt Him there, you know, for the last eight years. Yep. But as you walk with God, you know, that, that walk gets so much stronger. And the mm -hmm. more you pull in, the more he pulls in. And I, so to be yeah. there, it, it's indescribable, yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> I mean, you know, I have met people that don't believe in God. And to me, it's like, wow, how, how can you not, not believe in God? I mean, <laughs> you just look around and see all this beauty. But it's, he speaks to you all the time. I had a, a neighbor, the last place that we lived up in the Nine Mile area, and he was um, he was bitter at God, and I felt so bad, and I just kept pounding away at him, pounding away at him, and his pat question every time he saw me, well, so what did God say to you today, Val? <laughs> and I think he was doing it to make me upset, but it didn't. I just loved it because he opened the door for me to share. And I'd say, well, you know what God said to me today? Oh, and I think he probably was like, hmm. But he never got me because God had always said something to me that day. And, and so it was fantastic. But when you go to Israel, I don't know how anyone could ever question. I, it, it just, it all was just absolutely fantastic. And of course, the people I went with were all wonderful Christians. I didn't know any of them. I met them, but we all had that connection. Very cool. And now we continue to chatter back and forth, you know, on Facebook or Messenger or something. And so that was really neat. But I want to do my faith-based travel. But awesome. also, um, one of the things that did help me while Carrie was so sick 
as you're zooming back and forth, you know, an hour and a half each way to get to the doctor every day for radiation, or, you know, you're doing the chemo, you spend a lot of time in the doctor's office, and you see all these people. And I felt like I was so fortunate that um, I would be able to see people and talk to them. Right. You know, and I just now, I can't drive past any place, any cancer treatment without saying a prayer for all those people that are in there. Right. I have no idea who's in there, but I do know that once you go through that walk, you you know oh, yeah. what they're going through. You mm -hmm. really do. And But during that time, I had a very dear friend who would check in with me and she would say, well, how are you doing? You know, mm -hmm. Carrie has the best, you know, the, the best medical, you know, treatments right now, but how are you doing? Which I really appreciated that because sometimes... Oh, yeah. People don't realize how hard it is on the caregiver, too. It's you a know? very difficult walk. Yes. I saw my mom do that with my dad, and there would be times I'd say, well, why don't you just go? Like, she hadn't had her hair fixed for, you know, a year and a half. Cut. And I'd say, well, why don't you just, you know, take off and go to Spokane, and I'll stay with dad. And even though I know she trusted me, here's somebody there we go. Still telling me, you know, that they have a loved one, especially a husband, who is going through cancer. I can so totally relate, right. so totally relate. And I don't think you can ever relate quite like that until you've, you've experienced, experienced it. Plus, I think God takes us on those journeys so that we can be a light to other people moving forward. You know, that yeah. that may be part of our purpose. It's right. kind of why I was so transparent last week because I really feel that's what God is leading me to do. And when I was going through my surgery, I didn't share things I should have because mm -hmm. I, I wasn't ready to be that transparent yeah. and I realized that my audience could have seen so many amazing miracles had mm. I gone and been transparent sooner. Right. So I don't right. want to miss out on my journey and I don't want to miss out being a disciple through my journey and, and mm -hmm. uh, you know he takes us through all these things. That's why I said before, you know, we, we can choose how we react oh. and how we oh, live yes. after circumstances yes. and sometimes you got to realize that this is growth for you and it's right. taking you to a, the place where you're supposed to end up and and mm -hmm. what maybe mm -hmm. your purpose is in life so oh yeah yeah it it is like I've lost two brothers in car accidents and mm. the first one I was um, 21 and it taught me you don't have to be old no to die you know right. and so my mom had always said because she was such a wonderful woman of God I just I just always wanted to be like my mom mm -hmm. and when she passed away oh wow the cards the comments everything she did things that I never knew about I mean behind the scenes things for people I was fortunate to learn that when I was young right and so because of that we're a very huggy kissy family <laughs> I get but, that we are too. <laughs> yeah, but you know that's that's okay, and I like that. Yeah. But during this whole journey, like with Carrie, um, you do put their needs first, right. and so you don't realize just how drug out you're getting and things like that. Right. So a girlfriend shared with me um, a clean eating plan, mm -hmm. it, not a diet. It was a clean eating plan, and let me tell you, that really helped me with my energy yeah and my attitude yeah really and it's been over a year and a half now and that's the way I eat and I'm just no I'm just obsessed with looking in people's grocery carts <laughs> and I want to I want to tell them do you realize how bad this is you know like even we can relate right guys we talk about oh, this all the time <laughs> oh yeah I mean looking at a can of garbanzo beans that you're gonna make your own homemade hummus and yet now I realize canned has 26 percent sodium <laughs> and only like uh what was it 22 percent fiber but if you do it from the beans. dried garbanzo beans it's only one percent sodium and 51 percent fiber into <laughs> it's just i am i'm obsessed with stuff like that or as i look at some little kids that are really acting up and their mom is mad but then i feel like saying but look what you, they're eating <laughs> You know, I mean, it's like total sugar. So I try to, mm, but it's really hard. It is. But when I'm asked to give my opinion, I love it. I yeah, and you it. and you saw firsthand how good nutrition oh, makes yes. a difference because yeah. people don't realize it makes a difference in your sleep, your mood, your mm -hmm. everything, yep. and yep. and that's why I too have been sharing on that too because with my journey, there's oh, yeah. just no comparison. Yes. Yeah. And well, and you know. Um, I mean, it, it stands to reason. 
garbage in, garbage, garbage out. out. Okay. So if you put good, you know, kind of like bad gas, and then you expect your car to run, you can't do that right. with your body. Right. You just can't. Yep. And um, well, another thing I did, which was kind of crazy, but I, I, I'm glad that I did it. Three weeks after Carrie passed away, um, I was invited to India oh, wow. for a yoga retreat. Oh wow! And I just thought it's never been on my radar. I've had two kids go to to India, but it wasn't like my priority, right? Because there's so many other places in the world. But all of a sudden, I wanted to go. I just wanted to go, and I don't know how many people said Val. You're flying to India by yourself? Why are you doing that? <laughs> it was almost like a little challenge of mine. Mm -hmm. What was really neat is my husband and I had this song that on our 40th anniversary, he sang it to me and <laughs> some friends videotaped it. And I didn't know that okay. at the time. Then okay. as we get through it, I'm finally realizing that she's, you know, kind of like what you were doing, yeah. but I wasn't supposed to know it. <laughs> but he'd asked her to do this. So I have that now and I've watched it and just laughed and laughed and laughed but he sang it to me and it's shut up and dance with me <laughs> well I wasn't really sure when I took off to India and it's the longest non-stop flight oh, in the world right now mm -hmm. and I arrive in Delhi not quite sure what I'm doing didn't know anybody I didn't even know why I was invited because I thought maybe it was an industry type trip no it was that President Moti wanted to bring awareness to the world of how important yoga is. Mm -hmm. So there weren't very many travel agents, but there were um, like health, health and wellness, uh, wellness right. magazine editors, uh, bloggers, all these writers, yoga instructors. It was amazing. They were the most interesting people. We had 51 people that were invited okay. from 29 countries. Wow. Yeah, wow. so I was really honored that I got to go. But one thing while I was there that really honed in again what you eat is, you know, mind, body, spirit, and soul. Yeah. That it's, that's the whole thing. And the way that they approach, like cancer, is not with all the medication. No. It's with Food. your stress level. Mm -hmm. And I was a little leery, I will admit, of yoga for several reasons, but one of them was, I didn't know how connected with God yoga is. I didn't, I don't know, I don't know what I thought. It was ignorance. Well, you know? and, and it's one of those things that is, um, there's a lot of uh, opposition on it because yoga um, started out, you know, where people were meditating to Buddha. So yes. it's and assumed that's that- that's what I thought. When you, yes. when you do yoga, that that's automatically Absolutely. what you're doing. But it's a choice there too, that right. you can do yoga. Yoga is very good for your body. It keeps mm -hmm. your body, um, in my healing process, uh, the stretching has been one of the biggest and most important oh, yeah. aspects yeah. of and my your balance healing. balance yes. you're getting older, it's yep. amazing. Yeah. But I, I meditate mm -hmm. to God when I'm doing it too, exactly. and it's just really awesome. Yeah. But it's it's something that is so good for the body. So mm -hmm. if you guys haven't tried it, I highly recommend it. Yep, yep. And and it, it is. It's um, with the meditation. I mean, in my mind, there may be somebody saying something. I'm constantly talking to God. Yeah. And, I, and so it's almost like you're closing out right. that, and it's your time to just spend with God. And like 15 minutes after yoga to do that, Meditation is just wonderful. It just really gets gets you going. And well, doesn't it amaze you that even if you only have ten minutes to do some yoga, that ten minutes can limber your body mm -hmm. so incredibly much, and yeah. and you just feel so relaxed and at ease. Right. It's just it's it, really really important, and that's what I've been mentioning to you guys is making sure that you're taking care of yourself. Yes. And that is one very amazing yeah. way to do it. Yeah. And I did have a hard time slowing my mind down at first. It's I hard. Just, I kept thinking of all these things I should be doing in the office or, you know, in the right. house or this or that. And now I've actually caught myself kind of, <laughs> and I pulled myself up. I mean, you talk about relaxed, but that was, I mean, that to me was the big aha moment of going over there and realizing that God really is involved with all of that and what you put in your body and what you think, your stress level and everything. It's so What you everything. say to yourself? Yes. All of yes, that. Yes, yes. And it just all, so I think it was good for me because every day is a choice. Mm -hmm. And I choose 
to see all the good and everything. Some people think I'm probably a Pollyanna that just, you know, everything is just happy, happy, happy. But you know, I would rather see it that way. I mean, no, I am a I'm a serious businesswoman, okay. but it, it's not the end of the world if something doesn't work out. It's, exactly. It's not because I take it as, okay, I need to learn from this. Right. Now, if I don't learn right. from it and I turn around and make the same mistake next time, you know, God's just going to put me back through that exactly. class until I learn. <laughs> exactly. But the neat thing about being in India is we were at a restaurant eating and there's, oh, there was like Randy from Kyoto and... Uh, the neatest uh, yoga guy from Sydney, Australia. Oh, this wonderful gal from Cyprus. I mean, they were all so interesting. Right. We're sitting around and we're listening to Indian music. All of a sudden, <laughs> shut up and dance came on. Nobody'd heard it. Not even the two other people from the United States that went because there were three of us. They'd not heard it. I sang every single word. I mean, I knew everything. And they were like, how do you know this song? I said, you mean you don't? I said, this was my husband's song. What I took it as, because I will admit in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, should I have gone to India? I mean, is this an appropriate time? My gosh, it's so soon after right. his funeral. Maybe this is bad. No. That song, and then they immediately went back to the to Indian, Indian music. music. It was like, it was just like the elephant in the was, room, was, but all of a sudden somebody let out. It was like the interruption for the emergency exactly. broadcast. Exactly. It was so <laughs> freaky. However, it happened again in Dubrovnik. <laughs> I took a group over to um, Croatia and Italy on a wine mm -hmm. and food tour. It wasn't the same, um, the tempo was, lo was a lot slower and it was a, a different, what do you call it, you know, rendition or whatever. Right. But it was, and all of a sudden I'm listening to it and I had my girlfriend with me, the one that told me so I needed to start taking care of myself and eating right. And I, I'm like, Debbie, did you hear that? And she said, what? And I said, listen, listen. And it was quietly playing in the background of this gift shop. And she's like, shut up and dance. I've never heard that version of it, but that's it. And I said, he is following us all over. <laughs> in fact, I quickly put a, took my phone out and I video, I mean, I taped it and sent it to my kids. And I said, see, your dad is with me now too. <laughs> I just so think cool. it's so neat. Well, and I got to share this because I think this is so funny. With working with Val, her husband like is popping up all the time in these varied ways and one of the ways she shared with me a while back is something had happened um, with their banking and the lady from the bank contacted her and said that Carrie asked me to call you that he had put this in place prior to his death to help her because he knew that she was she wasn't the bookkeeper that was his job no, no. so he put these things in place so she's getting contacted what eight months I, six months yeah after I, I had, after his yeah. death that he's still looking out for her and I just that just melts my heart I think that is so awesome yeah I think yeah. that is so awesome and so precious yeah well what happened is I over I wrote a big check and I didn't realize that I had to transfer money from savings to checking. I just, it was, whoosh. that's always been his job. And so when I got the overdraft, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm really upset. And it was like, that's okay. Carrie said, you can have two chances. Consider this one of your second chances. I haven't had to have a second chance yet. So I'm doing really good. But yes, I don't know how many times I'll be talking to our accountant or something. And he'll say, Val, I'm sure Carrie put a note someplace. So I'll be looking through files and I will see it. I mean, he was very precious, very organized, but boy, he was he was making sure that I was taken care of. I just think that's so awesome. Yeah, I, yeah. I just think it's so awesome. Think my iPad was getting way too hot, oh, so yeah. I had to stick it under my leg for a little bit because we're in the sun. But if you guys have questions for Val, I know I saw some of you had made additional comments. I only had seen the first three. There were three more, and I'm trying to find them now, and it's not cooperating, and I don't, there we go, let's see. Um, but I told you, Val, Val is a kindred spirit. It just makes me laugh. It's just so neat because <laughs> we have similar things happen with us, with God, where he's just being so blunt. And mm -hmm. that is just so cool. I figured yeah. when you said that, something weird must have happened yes. like that. And that's yes. just so incredible. <laughs> yeah. Well, and what's funny is I didn't follow his instructions the whole way because I, because my mom passed away. I now own her house next door. So he had written on the envelope. Val, pay this amount. But then right underneath it was our taxes, but he hadn't written on that pay this. But I took them both in. I talked to the gal at the treasury, you know, in the courthouse, and I said, 
Now I have to pay these taxes, but I'm assuming the other taxes are due. And she said, well, yes. So I wrote those out too. And in my mind, I'm thinking, well, you know, he was just so sick that he probably forgot to do that. Or maybe he thought when I saw the top one, I'd automatically do the bottom one. Right. But that's not like him. He always wrote notes. So I paid it. <laughs> well, the ironic thing is, yes, it, it didn't bounce. They, they made sure to pay it. But about uh, three weeks to a month later, after all this happened, I get a call from the Treasury Department. They said, hey, we've been double paid on the taxes because your mortgage company paid the taxes. Who do you want us to refund the money to? So see, he was right. I wasn't supposed to pay him. <laughs> so yeah, it was funny. <laughs> one of my audience's name is Chad. He mm -hmm. is one of my prayer warriors, and he asked how he could pray for you. Oh. Um, well, just pray that I will continue to totally trust God, ask him all the time before I run ahead and do something that's kind of been in the past one of my problems. I do feel like I've really passed over that now, but I used to almost feel like an Indian giver. I would give God, oh, yeah. I would hand over a problem, Yep. but then if a, mm, a couple of days or something it wasn't answered, I'd take it back. Uh-huh. I don't feel like I do that now, but at the same time, it's that I'm thinking, okay, well, if he doesn't answer this way, what's plan B? <laughs> you know, because I want to know what's going on. So I, I would say just pray that I'm always very open and receptive to what God wants me to do because I never want to get mixed up on what the enemy is telling me and sure. all of a sudden I start second guessing myself. Yeah as to, hmm, is, is this right or is that right? And I just, um, I think too, I've, it's, it's been very important for me to be a good role model to my children and to my grandchildren. And I just want to continue that way because I know how important it was for my parents to be the example sure. that they were. And you know, I saw my mom lose two of her sons and her husband, and yet never once did she have a pity party. Never. One time, I thought I wanted to throw a pity party, but I quickly realized, what's it going to do for me? You right. know? I mean, really. Right. Nobody's going to want to come. <laughs> and and I, it just, um, I, I just feel like I've, again, if people ever question that God doesn't care about you, oh my, oh my gosh. Yeah. I just, I can't even explain how I have felt. Yeah. over these past months and nobody could have even forewarned me at how peaceful I would feel because I know where my husband is I know how excited my mom and dad and my two brothers were to see him I just I know it yeah. I just know it without a shadow of doubt yeah and um, he's just kind of popped up in different places and it's just so cool it is just so cool our kids have kind of continued a tradition they would go to catch a can to go fishing and they're heading back up. Last year I just wasn't thinking right and I did not send some of his ashes. They're oh. going this year and nice. they're excited, you know, that they, they are going to go. Nice. Um, there's just, we want to keep life, you know, there's so many things that we want Carrie to stay alive in. Our grandkids, they love dancing, that shut up and dance. <laughs> and they just, even <laughs> our little Kavanaugh, who is two, she's gonna be three in August. She was little, you know, when Papa yeah. left. Oh my, she um, she sees anything that Papa had and she will point, Papa! She knows because they've kept him alive. That's awesome. Yes, it is, awesome. and I, I thank my kids for doing that too. I yeah. really do, because um, it just is so important. He was such a huge part of our life that I just don't wanna ever Shove him under the rug. Sure, you know? absolutely. I mean, he's, he's, he's so important. And and by doing this, you know, and also I believe too that when when someone goes through cancer, you actually mourn while they're while oh. you're going through that process. Yeah. So when when they pass, you know, I think it's a very different process because of what they go through and how how cancer is just so so harsh. But it's just. Instead of mourning, you're you're. It's a relief. That's terrible to say, but it is a relief, and you ch you yeah. you switch your prayers, of not you know God if it's your will, please heal him. You switch your prayers to God. Take him. 
Yeah. You know, take him because he's, he's in, in so such much pain. pain and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And We're by finishing then, our sentences. I do think that all of the tears have pretty much been shed yeah. by then. In fact, in all honesty, they kind of were shed 13 years ago yeah. when I thought I was going to lose him. But again, what's so neat, oh, I mean, I could go on and on and on, but another <laughs> neat thing that really happened is he wasn't going to do any treatment the first time because he had seen my dad go through the treatment and okay. it was so harsh and so terrible. And really, once he started his chemo and radiation, I don't think my dad had a really good day after mm, that. Yeah. And it was two years of just, ugh. It, 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 was, it was hard. It was very hard to see him just become so thin and so weak. And, you know, because my dad had been always a, you know, big, strong guy. Right. Um, and so Carrie had seen that, and he was very close to my dad because his dad had passed away when he was 19. So my dad was his dad. Um, but mm -hmm. one of our sons was expecting the first grandchild. And... It was really neat the way he, he didn't want to put any guilt on him or anything, but he's like, you know what, Dad? You love kids. You've always been looking forward to grandchildren. I can't believe that you're not going to stick around to meet your first grandchild. <laughs> well, that's all he Harry needed to hear. hear. That's all he had to hear. Mm -hmm. So he was starting his chemo, and Blaze was born a day after our anniversary on the 13th of July. And actually, he got sprung out of the hospital because he had to go in for six days of chemo drip and then he'd be out for about two weeks and then he'd go back in for six days. They sprung him from the hospital so that he could go over to see uh, Spokane and meet his grandchild and then come back. And that I thought was really cool. However then, as time progresses, we have six grandchildren. <laughs> and it was so neat because our oldest son, who, well, he's turning 40 this year, <laughs> he had his first child just months before Carrie passed away. Yeah. And you know, I think my husband was so relieved to see that he had his baby. His baby, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, because that was really something he wanted for a long, long time. And um, it's almost like the circle had kind of come around. Yep. And our daughter got engaged. She dated the guy for seven years, and so she got married this last summer. I think he almost felt like everything's Thing in its place. place. Yes, yeah. and so now I've done my job. All my children are kind of, you know. <laughs> and he was there. So, yep, yep. And so that was really, really cool. And it was kind of a bittersweet wedding to not have him mm -hmm. there, but my three sons walked their sister down the aisle and oh, cool. they had pictures of Gma, mm -hmm. my mom, mm -hmm. which was so important to her, and of Carrie. And so they were both there yeah. at the wedding. They yeah. really were. And it was really neat. It was, you know, we feel like they, they saw it. Yep. You know, I don't know how much they get to see in heaven. That's a, one of my questions, uh, you know, I right? really would like to know. <laughs> but I would just like to know how much they get to see, but I'm sure that they got to see that right. and know that, you know, she was married and happy yeah. and yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's so awesome. And guys, do you see the importance of finding the shiny penny in all your circumstances? You know, I feel for people that allow their circumstances to define them because mm -hmm. they live a life of misery. And and I can't I can't imagine that. And when you're going through these trials, it's so nice to be surrounded by other positive people that pull you out of your places because we all we're human the enemy speaks and one of the things I heard on the way here which was actually kind of funny is that we need to be quiet and and part of the prayer I was listening to was a sermon actually Darren's oh. and um, he said in his prayer that may we have the power to discern God's voice over ours and the enemies and mm -hmm. that's so powerful because I'm telling you guys the attacks that we've been under is the enemy just whispering in our ear and it's like if you're not strong enough to know that or you don't know Jesus and you don't realize that that's what's happening, you end up in such tremendously low and awful places. So to be able to live life where you're blossoming, you know, mm -hmm. I feel that Val's in a new area of her life and and um, it's just neat to watch her growing in, in her walk and and she has been one of those people that has through her, even just her posts on Facebook, to to you know, 
help me to grab my bootstraps or to just know that I'm surrounded by the most amazing people. And that's so important in your walk is if you don't have those amazing people, I know this is going to sound funny, but seek them. <laughs> you can, <laughs> you know, um, it's just like in business when you see somebody that's doing something, even if it's like, for example, blogging and they're doing something really unique and it's really eye catching and it's drawing you in. I'll go seek out those people and I'll talk to them and, and find out what they're doing and let them know how impactful it is. And, you know, they end up becoming friends. So you can seek those people that are around you. You can choose. And, and guys, I'm going to put it out there. Chad, you are always so wonderful at asking people um, what their prayer needs are. And I say it often, but I want to make sure I say it today. If you have prayer needs, please don't hesitate to put them in the description and in the comments below. Um, it's really important. You know, um, the power of prayer is huge and God answers prayer. I've seen it so many times and I can see comments on the screen. I'm going to try. If it, it's so bright and it's really hard to see. So instead of staring at the screen with my mouth hanging open, I'm going to comment later and I'm going to um, share the link with Val so she can also comment to you guys. So if we are missing being able to comment to you live, please know we will after the fact. But, um, you know, the power of prayer is huge. And you can talk to God just like I'm talking with Val. That's the amazing part of it. And, and um just being able to walk away from our greatest struggles and pull into God has been one of the most life-changing things for me and I know it is for Val and I think it's so cool that her husband saw you know he wasn't as prayerful as she was but he saw the benefits yeah. of her prayers yeah. and my husband is the same way you know and and there is something so great to also be said about the man of the house and and him having that position and you as the wife supporting him as the man of the house. My husband prays for us every night when we go to bed and he prays at every meal. And as over these eight years, I've watched his prayers grow and I've watched him grow and I've watched God work in him and change him. And I'm sure he's seen the same in me. And it's just a really neat thing to see. Um, if you haven't watched the movie War Room, I highly encourage you to watch it. It is such an amazing um, movie uh, on the power of prayer and it's a lot it's a really fun movie um, I don't know the one of the main actors names but the older woman in there um, is just a hoot and it, it's really a fun movie but I know we've kept you guys today and um, you you know me the, <laughs> I think last week's was 50 minutes too so Val and I have have the gift <laughs> and we enjoy chatting with you yes. yes. <laughs> but I'm just so grateful that I got to share her with you because one of the purposes of doing this today is to show Val how this works because Val's got a voice too and I'm encouraging Val and Val feels the um, nudging also to step out on her own and put a voice and a face to her platform. So if you enjoyed listening to Val today, I encourage you to go over, use the link down below because there is another international house of travel in a different place. You'll see her pretty face on it so you know it's her, but the link is below. And I want you to just hop over there, like her page, and be ready to support her too because she's going to start talking about food and wellness. And I'm sure that at times on that journey in her um, blogging, if I have any say in it, <laughs> that she shares some of her story with um, her experience too with Carrie because there's a lot of people out there that go through cancer. I mean, it's just, uh, oh, it's you talk to six people and three of them have cancer or have had cancer. So it's a common walk these days, which is sad and a result of our food and a lot of our environment. Um, but she's a wealth of information and I really encourage you to check her out. And I, I just feel so tremendously blessed that she has walked into my life. It was through a friend of a friend, kind of a referral kind of thing. And we just instantly connected. So I'm grateful for that and um, look for her on Instagram too. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, now you've pushed me into it. <laughs> That's been a topic of discussion. Now you have to find her on Instagram, too. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, guys, thanks for joining in. Thanks for listening. Um, do you have any last words of wisdom you'd like to share with them on their, on their walks? Oh, just, just be faithful to start your day every morning with time for God. Seriously. Mm -hmm. um, devotions and just thanking Him mm -hmm. for another day. 
and it's hard as you get busy during the day and sometimes at night I hit my head on the pillow and I think oh, I haven't talked to him all day <laughs> and I feel terrible but he he understands you yeah. know he sees what's going on but um, I think that as you go through the day talking to him making sure that you're aware of his presence that's just gonna make your day go so much better oh my gosh it yes. really is it good really words, is good words yep. of wisdom very much so they've heard me yep. talk about that my devotions are one of my non-negotiables in the beginning of my day yep. I fight for it <laughs> yes. well in fact it's amazing I used to say when my kids were little I didn't have time in the morning and then my one of the gals from Bible study said we'll just pray that God wakes you up every morning and I'm thinking, well, now that's silly because I, I never can wake up early. You know, I just, I wake up and the kids are, you know, just starting to get up. I prayed that and let me tell you, it was like an alarm clock, even though it was not an alarm clock. And I started waking up about 35 minutes earlier every day. Seriously. That's awesome. Oh, it, I mean, that's just one of the little ways that you start keeping track of everything that God answers you on. Oh my goodness. You got a and, journal, guys. You got yeah. a journal. Yes, it's you just do. An, it's amazing. Yep. Looking back on it, I, uh -huh. it just makes my mouth drop open. Oh, yeah, it is. So, yeah, if you <laughs> don't think you have the time, just ask God to give you some extra That's time. That's awesome. And he will. That's he awesome. Will. I believe it. I <laughs> yeah. so believe it. Never thought to ask that. <laughs> Oh, see, you can ask for anything. Yes. So, guys, I'm just going to, uh, again, check out uh, Val over at internationalhouseoftravel.com, and the link for her Facebook page is down below. And I will probably share some links as she starts getting things going because she's also considering doing some podcasting, which I think mm -hmm. would be great because when you're traveling or out walking, she's something of a great influence to listen to. So um, I'm just going to say a quick prayer for you guys. Again, thank you all for commenting and being a part of today. I can't see the comments but we will field them and answer them when we can get inside where we can see the screen. And thankfully my, my iPad or iPhone didn't get too hot that it kept recording. So guys, dear Jesus, I just thank you. Bless our audience. Bless those that have come out and taken the time out of their busy day to join us and listen in. Uh, may our words have uh, affected and been nourishment to them. And uh, Lord, just bless them in their troubled times. Bless them in their good times. And help them to see the blessings in both. Uh, they're always there. And Lord, I just ask that you bless Val on her walk with her new ventures and everything that she does. I, I see her, your hand in her life and I see the tremendous blessing that she is to others. And I just thank you for her. And Lord, just thank you for this time. And I just ask this all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Guys. Have a fantastic rest of your day, rest of your week. I will see you next Wednesday. If you haven't checked it out, I am starting to share videos and footage over on Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Wilderness. We are sharing this journey. This is an interesting journey. There is so much going on, and I don't know how I'm keeping up. I do. God is blessing me with the abilities because, guys, if you could see my house, I shared a picture on Instagram yesterday. My house looks like a bomb went off. <laughs> My dogs don't know what to do. They can't move without running into boxes or people. So it's crazy, but stay with us. I know that God is going to shine through this. I know he's going to work some miracles that are going to make our jaws drop. And I know our future is going to be amazing. And I want yours to be too. So guys, take care. Have a great day. God bless. Now I can't see the... <laughs> we can't see the button in the bright light. Finish.